Yeah. Okay, here we right. go. So, of course, I've got two binomials, so I have to double distribute, also known as FOIL. Some of you learned that. It's FOIL. So, here we go. X times X is X squared. X times 5 plus 5 times X. 5X. 3 times X is 3 times X, also known as 3X. 3 times 5, 15. That's great. And I think I can simplify yeah. a little further here, right? I can combine those middle terms. That often is the case. Often the case. To give me 8x plus 15. So do you have to multiply in that order? I mean, I always wonder that. First right. times first, you know, first times, you know, then the outers, then the inners, and then the, the yeah. last. You have to go in that order? You don't. Yeah. I mean, that commutative property. Right, tells right. Me I don't have so I could do like 3 times x, then 3 times 5, then x times x, then x sure. times the so order. Sure. Well, I mean, everything multiplies by everything. But the reason we do it in this order is that gives it to us in the nice order from the biggest degree down to the Right, that's standard so form. Handy, right. Standard form. Right. Okay, so what we've been doing recently is we've been factoring things. We've been breaking things down into their factors. So if I want to factor this, I basically will just want to do this process backwards, don't I? If I want to factor this, I'm sure. looking for... It's just the opposite of multiplying, really. Yeah. yeah, sure. I'm looking for that. So this is the factored form right here. X plus 3 times X plus 5. Those are the two factors that multiply together to equal this. So if I ask you to factor this, this is what I'm looking for. And they, they are really, they are equal to the same thing, really, right? As a matter of fact, if, if I made equations out of them, if I graphed them, right, y equals x squared plus 8x plus 15, and I were to graph y equals, in parentheses, x plus 3, in parentheses, x plus 5, if I stuck them both in my graphing calculator and graphed them both, would they look the same? They, look exactly they, the they same. would look exactly they the same. Exactly they are the same. They are the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good. So let's factor some of these. I'm learning these so much, Miss Stewart, yeah. when I work. Okay. I this is great. You should hang out with me more often. Okay. So that's basically what we're doing. We're factoring these trinomials. All right. So here I go. These can be a little tricky, and I'm just going to tell you right now. They involve some guess and check, some educated guess and check. All right. But if you do a lot of these, they get really easy. I mean, how many of these have we factored, Mr. Haas? I mean, I've factored 8, millions, thousand. probably. Millions? <laughs> wow. Maybe not millions. Okay, so here I go. So, here's my mission. I want to factor this trinomial. I want to break it down into the two binomials that will multiply together to equal this. So, I know it's going to be two binomials, so I'm just going to set up my two sets of parentheses. And now I'm thinking about the double distribution, or FOIL, if you will, right? So this times this has to equal my x squared. So what times what equals x squared? Well, x times x works. Yeah, okay, so that's going to work there. So far, so good. Now, I mean, could it be something else? I mean, could it be like x squared times 1? Is that going to do it for me? Or? It could, but it's not going to work as I right, go I, I think, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think, yeah, and, yeah. And you kind of want to break it in, into, into two pieces that are linear functions. You want to get rid of that squared guy Absolutely. so that later on you can solve these things, Absolutely. right? Isn't that what, where you're going with this? Absolutely. Solving quadratics? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, so now let's look at the last piece. So this guy times this guy is going to have to equal that last term. So I want to think of the factors Let's just factor that little guy by itself. What are the factors of 6? Well, let's see. I have 1 and 6. I have 2 and 3. I guess that's it. That's, yeah, that, okay. that's pretty much it. So now, let's just envision this, if you will. If I put the 2 and the 3 in there, well, that's going to multiply to equal the 6. No yeah, problem. yeah, that, that looks good. But now if I'm thinking of, I sometimes call it the OI test. Oh, right. I'm wanting the outer and the inner, that 3x and that 2x. Yeah, that's not going to give you a 7x. It has to give me the 7. I don't think that's going to yeah, work. No, that's not going to work, Miss Stewart. So the 2 and the 3 factors are not going to work. Let's try the 1 and the 6, shall we? All right. So the 1 times the 6, that works. 
Okay, oh, yeah, that, yeah. Now let's see what happens when I do the six times the x and the one times the x. Are those going to combine? Oh yeah, I think that works. They are. Now that's only going to work if they're both positive. But that works out just fine because a positive one times a positive six gives me my six. Right, and I think, you know, as you factor, I mean, you, you said you factored a million quadratics. Well, so that's that's a lot, but million. you probably, I mean, you know, you can do a lot of this in your head as you go along, and you might start to notice patterns that kind of emerge, and just Absolutely. it'll get easier and easier, but really the best way to factor is to just factor. Factor a lot, a lot of things, do a lot. Right? All right, let's do a few more of these. All right, right? I love okay. factoring. This is exciting. You know, and uh, it, factoring comes up again and again and again. It, it, is, really it is a tool that yeah. you will use all the way up to calculus, right? Yeah. I mean, in your calculus course, students are still factoring. Yeah. I mean, you really need to factor. We do it all the time. All the time. Okay, here we go. Factor this. Again, factoring, you're breaking it apart into its factors, into the things that multiply to equal that expression. Here I go. All right. So, boom, this times this has to equal x squared. I'm feeling pretty good about my x times x. Okay, the last two terms have to multiply to equal that 12. Ooh, gosh. There are a lot of factors oh, yeah. of 12. Of okay, them. we've got 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. You could kind of go four and three, four I guess, three, if you wanted to, six and two, but that's the same thing. thing. Okay. So, yeah. let's throw this in. Now, I'd like to keep in my mind here that that outer and that inner has to combine to give me a negative seven. Negative seven X. So, I'm thinking the one and the twelve aren't going to produce a negative seven X. The two and the six, I'm not sure. Ooh, the three and the four are looking promising. Let's put in a three and a four. Does it matter where I put the three and where I put the four? I don't think so. I don't think so either. So let's see. I know my x times my x works. My three times my four works. Let's see what my outer and my inner, are those going to produce a seven? They are, but that's a negative seven. Oh, so let's you're see gonna if I can make them both negative. Would that produce a negative seven? I think that'll work. Okay, let's just double check if that's going to work. A negative 3 times a negative 4, will that give me a positive 12? That works. Hey, that works. So I have factored that trinomial. Isn't Looks good. Fun? Yeah, let's do one more. All right, let's do two more. All right, two more. Let's do two more. Two more. Okay, here we go. Let's do x squared plus 3x minus 10. What the heck? Yeah. Okay, here I go. Good. Factoring and breaking it down into the binomials. x times x will equal my x squared. I'm looking for what times what equals a negative 10. Let's worry about the negative later. So what are the factors of 10? Right, let's go 10 and 1. 10 and 1. 5 and 2. 5 and 2. I think that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so again, those have to combine with my x's and produce a 3. Which do you think is most promising off the bat? Well, I mean, if I'm not considering signs, I think the only way I'm going to do it is the 5 and the 2. I mean, yeah, well, let's throw that in. Somehow, I think one of them is going to have to be negative, though. I don't ah, know which one. Yeah, okay, well, let's try this. So All right, let's try it. Times the 5, that's my 5x. 2 times my x, that's my 2x. All right, how are those going to combine the 5x and the 2x to give me a positive 3x? I guess I'm going to have to subtract the two, maybe? Is that going to yeah. do it? Yeah, I think that 5x needs to be positive, and that needs to be negative. Okay, this is kind of the tricky part. For that 5x to be positive, I have to look up here. Where do I want that positive to go? Well, this is x times a 5. Oh, I think I need it right there. That looks right? good. For that to be a negative 2x, that 2, okay, the negative has to go there. Now, is that going to work out okay? Let's double check. A negative 2 times a positive 5, that's going to give me my negative 10. So that works out great. I have factored that trinomial. Pretty cool. All right, I can't help myself. Let's do one more. One more. Let's do x squared minus 
minus 5x, let's say, minus 6. Okay, Doug? All right, here I go. I'm factoring and breaking it down. x times x is going to work. Now, something times something has to equal a negative 6. So let's think of the factors of 6. I've got 1 and 6. I've got 2 and 3. Huh. Hmm. I'm God. thinking 1 and 6 is going to work for us this time. Yeah, but, but the 2 and the 3, that's kind of 5-y. Well, let's try the 1 yeah, and the 6. Wow. Let's see. Mm. This is a sneaky one. Let's just try the 1 and the 6. There's some guess and check. All right. Let's Don't try be afraid it. of that okay. guess and check. Okay, here I'm checking my outer my and my inner. X times 6 is 6x. Six. 1 times x is 1x. Are those going to produce a negative 5x? Hmm, they will if this little guy is negative and this little guy is positive. Do you guys agree? Negative 6x plus 1x is going to give me my negative 5x? No, that works. So for that to be a negative, that 6 has to have a subtraction in front of it. For that to be a positive, that 1 has to have an addition. But let's just double check. All is right. that going to work? A positive 1 times a negative 6? Oh, work. that does give me a negative. So, Ms. Stewart, is it possible, like, I noticed that uh, 2 and 3, that will also give you a 5. Is it possible that you could have two different answers? Is that, could that ever happen? I don't think so, but let's no? try. All right, because I, you know, sometimes I'm not sure about these things. So, <laughs> all right, so what if you put a 2 and a 3? All right, let's try. I like know. a negative 2 and negative 3, that's also a negative 5. You're that right. looks good. That gives me a negative 5. That's not working. One isn't working. Multiply. Oh, look, the, my oi yeah, definitely that's gonna works. That's a nice negative 5, but negative 2 times a negative 3 is a positive 6. Right, yeah. And mm. that does not work. Right, so there can only be really one solution here, one, one, one set of factors. There's one unique really. way right. to factor right. these things. Absolutely. There's just one way to factor it. And really, the only way to check it out is just to multiply it out, right? Do I your mean, double distribution. Yeah. That's what's nice about these. You can always know if you factored it correctly because you just multiply yeah, it Yeah, easy together. to check. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mr. Stewart.